In this video, we're going to be talking about a really popular feature in Simplify 3D, and that's infill patterns. Simplify 3D has several infill options available, so we're going to teach you about the different types and how they work. For today's example, I'm going to be building a phone case, so I'll go ahead and drag in that model. Let's just slice it with the default settings. Change the coloring to feature type, then I'm going to do a top-down view and zoom in so we can get a better look. Now if we go into the middle of the part, you'll be able to see the infill. According to the legend, infill is shown in orange. It's currently in sort of a crisscross pattern called rectilinear. So if I change my preview to by layer, it's going to be easier to see how this works. You can see that this pattern prints a set of lines in one direction on the first layer, and then in the other direction on the second layer, and then it alternates until it's complete. A trick to be able to see this even better is to check the single layer only box. So now it's even easier to see the pattern being printed first in one direction and then in another. But there are many different patterns you can choose from in Simplify 3D, so let's take a look. We'll exit the preview and go into the process settings. Now everything we're going to be looking at today is on the infill tab. You can see there's a lot of different settings in here, but for today we're just going to focus on the basics. The first is the actual pattern used for the infill. And there are two settings that deal with that. The pattern for the outer layers and the pattern for the internal layers. As you can see, the default infill pattern is rectilinear, and that's that crisscross pattern we just saw. But if I click the drop down, you can see that there's multiple other options. To save time, I'll go ahead and show you a snapshot of what each of these patterns look like in the preview. And for this, we've used a model of a simple cube. So many of these options are used for different purposes. Rectilinear, the default, is a good balance of strength and printing speed. But other patterns, like grid and triangular, can provide a stronger print at the expense of some extra printing time. And there are also some patterns that are often used for more aesthetic purposes, like wiggle or fast honeycomb. So you can choose the one that's best for your print. I'm going to use triangular for my phone case today. You also have some options to control the external fill pattern. However, since this makes up the outer skin of your model and needs to be completely solid, you have fewer options here. There's just rectilinear and concentric. And here's what those look like in the preview mode. Many times people change this setting just for looks alone. In most cases, the default of rectilinear works just fine, so I'll leave that selected for today. So I click OK and go back to my preview. So now I'm going to go down to the very first layer of my print. Here you can see the completely solid external layers we were just talking about, shown here in green. And as I click through, you can see that rectilinear pattern. Once we get to the first infill layer, you can see the triangular pattern. Now this pattern prints lines in three directions on each layer of the print. This means it's putting out more plastic on each layer than the rectilinear infill pattern we looked at earlier since that pattern only prints lines in one direction on each layer. So because the triangular infill puts out so much more plastic per layer, the lines end up being spaced out farther apart than the rectilinear. This is due to a concept called the infill percentage. Infill percentage is another term for the density of your part. It represents how much plastic is actually inside your part. So for example, this part has an infill percentage of 20% meaning that 20% of the inside of the part is plastic, and the other 80% is just air. But thankfully, even at just 20%, these patterns are very strong and can still create a durable part while saving plastic. So now that you know what the infill percentage is, let's look at how to change it. We exit the preview mode, go into the process settings, and you'll see there's this infill percentage slider right here at the top for easy access. You can also change the infill percentage by going to the infill tab. And you'll notice that as you change the infill percentage here, it also changes on the slider and vice versa. Now a 0% infill percentage would be completely hollow and 100% would be completely solid. Most people use between 20 and 50% because it still provides a strong part without using a ton of plastic. So that covers the basics of what you need to know for adjusting the infill of your part in Simplify 3D. Now I'm gonna go print my phone case. See you later.